Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. The blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media signing black in and shining again asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. So getting right to this, I don't keep up with the baby. I haven't kept up with rap in decades, but I've been sick of it, to be honest with you. I was sick of it in even the early 90s when it got to be more gangster rap. I was just tired of it. I was sick of uh, ninjas trying to be hard. I got sick of the swag. I got sick of all that stuff. And I was all for men acting like men because on the flip side, I wasn't for men acting like little girls. And now we're seeing somewhat of emerging. We've been seeing for over a decade now emerging of the two extremes I couldn't stand um, and into emerging of the two of them into what we now today call the homo thug. And uh, it's not a phenomenon you see every day, I'm sure, but I mean, it's there, you know about it. And I realized something. That is the merging of the two things that, that, that the gynocracy has supported, loved, demanded even. So I'm looking at the way that sisters have reacted to the baby. And I don't know if it's true that he killed someone at Walmart. I just read some little snippet about it this morning. Somebody said something about, well, you know, when he killed a man in Walmart, black women started listening to more of his songs. He got more popular. But then he didn't have flattering things to say about the G.A.Y. community. And so um, now they won't cancel him. Sisters exposed themselves. Gentlemen, I told you it's war. <laughs> what are the two worst extremes for you? One, that bent wrist lifestyle. Because they have been targeted for bugs. Understand that. Number two, that thug lifestyle. If you blend the, uh, now see, if you live that bent wrist lifestyle, especially if you're black, then you are headed for an early grave or a sick ward. I'm not saying this because uh, black men of that persuasion practice worse hygiene per se. I'm saying this because they've been targeted. I know they have been. That community's been targeted. And so, um, yeah, they, they've been targeted. So those are the things waiting on you. If you want to practice that thug lifestyle, then it's an early grave or it's a cell block. If you want to combine the two, then you're looking at all three. Everything that is bad for brothers, especially thinking black men, sisters have promoted it in mass. And every sister ain't done so. The problem is that uh, the problem is that, that their support still predominates over the opposition. Their support of it predominates over their opposition against these things. Now, um, Let's take a look at uh, this self-called goddess Ayana. She's pro polygyny But this same self-called goddess Ayana, and I, I say self-called because I call no one god or goddess except for Allah, um, has sat up and even said before, we saw this several months back, said before that those guys have alpha energy, the ones that are incarcerated. And you, sir, you're just not alpha enough. She said this. She got that masculine energy going on. But then she also turned around and said, and I saw the clip, shout out to the guys in the Telegram group. I saw the clip and it, it, it I forgot the name of the clip, I'm sorry, but 12 minutes and 40 seconds into it, she pretty much said, black men who will not foster relationships with kids that are not their own are not doing much for the black community. Let me explain something to you. My father never really cared about other kids except for my brother and me and our kids, his grandkids. He has cared very little. The kids about whom he has cared have been related to him. Now, if somebody in the family adopts kids, he still treats those kids like they're related. But you can't just come from, you can't just be no outside kid and he's somehow responsible for you. That's how my dad sees it. He has by extension cared about my friends and my brother's friends by extension. So he did do some things for the boys in my neighborhood. He actually invited my partners over when I was a teen. Invited my partners over. 
And I think he had us watch Boys in the Hood, or there was another movie. It was one of them early 90s Negro movies uh, about life in the hood. He had us watch that. And he had a talk with several of us. And this is because a friend of ours from the neighborhood named Brick, who was abnormally tall and strong and big for his age, and he was, he's been very successful with women reproductively, by the way. But this guy, really nice guy, um, had been attacked by some cops. And so um, we, would, we were upset. And my father wanted us to understand that if we were going to take vengeance on these cops, we were going to have to have military training and supplies. Because some of the guys in the neighborhood were talking about how we were going to pull this off. And we weren't even from the hood. We were from a middle class neighborhood. But the thing was that my father uh, had this talk with them. He cared about them by extension because he cared about us. This was him trying to do something for other black men's kids. When I was on my last vacation in the United States, one of my partners, I'm gonna call him JV, didn't get these kind of talks from his own dad. His dad was there, but he didn't get these kind of talks from his dad. So what he did, he said to me, yo, Black, man, I really appreciate Dr. Black for doing that, bro. I never forget that. He said this to me on the last vacation a few weeks ago in the States. Now, let's get to this. According to this logic, women should have been lining up for my dad. Now, the thing is, they were doing this beforehand because of my dad's height and his muscles and his profession. That's why they were lining up for him. But as far as we can tell, he's been faithful. One of the ways we can, uh, one of the evidence I have that he's been faithful is that, see, and as he's retired, he's spent most of the time at home with mom. Now, if he was unfaithful all this time, he wouldn't just stop because he's retired. He would actually have more time to go and run through these broads. But he's not shown any signs of an unfaithful person, but he's been pursued like this. I don't say this to boast on him. What I'm saying is that the fact that he was willing to do these things for other kids in the neighborhood did not do anything. It didn't change this. And this is part of why it is I, I say the things that I say about trying to satisfy and please and you know draw out these women. Man, I, they don't like you, me, or anybody else for that matter. They got issues with us, all of us, the way we do anything at all. So I'm going to say this too. When it comes to what uh, uh, Brittany Renner did regarding P.J. Washington, I'm going to let him off the hook because I usually do this when it comes to men if it's something that they didn't know. And let's be honest, P.J. Washington does, like many black boys, he does not have anyone in his ear telling him, bruh, this is women, this is what they want. See, that's the thing about it. Women got men in their ear and women in their ear saying this is what men want. That's how you keep a man. But don't do it because you really keep a man. This is what men want. You got women and men in little girls' ears telling them this stuff to so-called protect them. When you a boy, ain't nobody, matter of fact, the only time they get you is, man, look, you, you, you good at basketball, bro. These hoes gonna be coming at you, bro. You take all the punani you can. And then along comes an older woman that's nice to look at. And mind you, the time that he spent Getting and staying as good at his sport as he is, it's time he can't go reading social media so he doesn't know who she is and what she is and what she's done, doesn't know. Should he? Sure, but not really. He's not retired. He's not at retirement age. He's at that age where he's got a coach who is rightfully demanding that he spend a lot of time practicing because he's already good, he's sharp, so stay sharp, stay toned, don't get dull. And he's got fans he's trying to be nice to, and he's also got relatives, some of them who are, are many, of, many of whom are probably mooching off of him, but they still family, so he at least has to act like they're related. He's got all this, he ain't got time to keep up with this stuff. And then guess what happens? She gets him for the baby that nobody else would give to her because they weren't willing to be tied to nobody like her because they know. <laughs> this is what's bothersome about that. 
And then everybody sit up saying, we know PJ Washington, this, that, and the other. Nah, you know what, bro? I'm gonna say this. With the knowledge out there, maybe I could have a talk with PJ Washington and say, bro, here's why you should have known. Maybe I could, but I'm not gonna have a talk with him. Publicly, what I'm gonna say is nope. Until the day that in our culture, boys are as taught and as explained well, until the day that we have equal access to information about women, what they want and what their games are, that they like what they have about us. Until that day, I'm not going to hold men as accountable because the power is not in our hands. Grown men don't have that knowledge because the knowledge is power and the ladies know this. And so they intentionally keep it away from grown men as best they can. So what kind of power is a boy supposed to have at age 15? And if he's clueless and, and knowledgeless and therefore powerless at age 15, how much do you think he can catch up by age 18? Now I'm putting this stuff out there. This is going to change. There's going to come a day when this information will have been out there for so long that everybody will have had access to it. And it will be just like the video games that everybody today knows about. And I will have to change my tune then. But right now, while this is still relatively new and while we still got generations of boys and girls growing up under the sole control of these gynocrats. That um, they don't have a chance at learning what men need to know about the games that women play and the things that women want. I don't have a leg to stand on and say, okay, hold up in the second seat. Sir, you're supposed to know. Sir, you're supposed to know. At that age, what was he supposed to know? Most of us would have done no better because we would have known no better. Now, granted, there's a possibility that someone pulled his coat. That is a possibility. If that's the case, I would stand corrected regarding him. But I'm not going to sit up here and put most of the responsibility on him. And I'm going to put some of it, I'm going to put most of it on her between the two of them. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to put most of this responsibility again on the gynocracy that runs the ninja community. Because that's what it is. It stopped being a black community a while back. It's a ninja community now. Especially when the gynocrats run it. Hair-headed hyenas. Calling shots. Because see, let's call this what it is. Somebody put Britney Renner up on game probably before she hit puberty. Now look at what she's doing. What kind of game were we put up on when we was young coming up? Not much. And then to make matters worse, Britney Renner was older. She groomed him. If you switch the gender roles in this case, and he's grooming someone uh, the same age as PJ Washington, but it's a lady he's grooming, then we already know nobody's going to put any accountability on that girl. She pregnant, uh, that, that's his fault. So really what it is, is it's this thing of, see, we're all conditioned subconsciously, even to the point that some of us men in the manosphere will subconsciously blame PJ Washington because as a guy, we assume that he enjoyed the sex more than she did and that, so we have to put the blame on him. No, 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 shut that fit. Now, it's as I've said before, I've said this previously, gentlemen, it's war. And when you look at the stages of male consciousness regarding this war, then you understand something. You can sum it up like this. We were boys, we thought it was about love. In our teens, we learned that it's a game. Somewhere between our teens and our adulthood, we learned that it's a competition. And we are now learning that it is a cold war against us. And the sooner the next generations of young boys learn that it is a cold war, the better off they'll be. But PJ Washington is not a, his crop, his age group has not yet been made aware that this is a competition, let alone, or that it's a, yeah, that it's a competition, let alone that it's a war. They've not been made aware of this. Nobody set up and says to young, uh, uh, says to young black man, look, is she older than you and she hot and all that good stuff? Then you got to know why she's single. There may be a good reason for that, but you got to know why. Now, as for me, I, I actually, because of my brain, I can't tolerate too much uh, time with women that are younger than me. 
they're not as mature as I am. They never are. Women my own age are usually not as mature as I am, but at least the gap is, is closer. They're just not. They don't think. They don't think as often as I do. Their brains wander off too much. You start trying to work things out with them to prevent certain problems, and, and they go, huh? Okay, see, I got to say all that again? God have mercy. That's what it's like. But that's me. As, as, as I said before, I realize this is a one-off. What, the, what, may, what works for me in that regard is not going to be the exact same thing that works for everybody every time. But for the majority of you, what's going to work for you is going to be someone your age or younger. Because that's, that's generally what they go through. And, and, and like I've said, that's, that's the power women have. We're dealing with um, a group of women that refuse to accept accountability for their power, but demand on the power. They insist on the power and demand it. But we already know that. No one is saying to these young boys, if she's older than you and she's fine, you could give her a chance or not, but you got to know why she's older than you, fine, and not taken. Because men want women while she's single. And they always come with this, well, I turn away and I turn down. And, well, see, when you were a young dude, you think that's true because you have experience with women turning men away. Because you, you're young. If you ain't been turned away, you've seen your boys get turned away. Most of us have experienced both when we're young. We believe this stuff. So no. Let him off the hook. Exonerate him. Now, as for Simone Biles, I'm going to refrain from calling her a quitter just yet and put her on suspicion, but just yet I'm going to refrain from it for one reason, and that is that she's not, she doesn't have a history of quitting. The same thing for Naomi Osaka. She doesn't have a history of it. And also Naomi um, just, ref I think it was an appearance that she, well, yeah, it was one thing she refused to do beforehand. She just, um, she didn't go and get started and then quit in the middle. So don't make a comparison between them. Simone Biles did quit in the middle, but she, had, she has no history of quitting. She has a history of competing and performing well, and she's quit this one time. We are very right to show some leniency for them based on these things while still saying that we're not going to tolerate a pattern of quitting from sisters in general if we're going to sit up here and hold men accountable to not quit. You can actually do both at the same time. Gentlemen, again, I wish it was not war. It's just that it is, and they ain't quitting. At no point after all of these things, after all of these discussions, at no point do you see the bulk of them coming along and saying, oh, wait, you know what? We've really been bad to y'all. Now, there's one thing I want to say before I go about that, too. And that is this, that you see um, more and more women beginning to show understanding. You also see more men saying, I don't even want your understanding at this point. You're a chameleon. You're only saying this because you see what's coming down the pike. What I would say to that is. I actually think we should take on that, that viewpoint, and that's kind of the viewpoint that Lion of MGTOW has. Shout out to him. He's of the viewpoint that they may be coming around and getting smarter, but so far the muck and what, why now? Why not before? The reason I say this is not because I don't think that um, these ladies can, uh, I don't think that they cannot admit that they were wrong about something. But as I said, one thing I have said before is that it should be when they're young and childless if they're really wise. But the other reason I say this is because I don't think they can necessarily learn lessons from us men. They can learn from circumstance, but not necessarily from us men. I don't think they can. The current crop, the current generation can learn from us men. The reason why we should still take this tough stance where in, in which we say, OK, well, that's great. Maybe you're not an enemy anymore. However, um, we're still not going to take care of you and wipe you up. It's too late. The reason I think we should do this is because the younger girls at this point, they're still kids right now. They're still kids. I do think that today's children, girl children can look and see the consequences of these older women and then uh, learn better. Say, I don't want to go through that because it would send a very strong message to their psyche. We 
and my age group and, and older and younger sent a strong message to these girls when they were young. Men are going to always be there and they're going to always be easy. That's the message we sent. They just happy to have somebody. That's the message we sent. We were told to. It was passed down from generation to generation and it, it, it worked well for the ladies and it led to what we see now. So I don't think that these adult women of today can 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 really fully grasp that lesson when they're young and tight and childless and they got options. But young girls can learn that lesson if they see it when they're children. They can figure out, okay, damn, this is true. This is real. We can run men away. Even though their junk sticks up and they got hormones like we do, we can run them away. We can send them messages that say, stay the hell away. So when women start complaining about not being approached, yeah, we could sit up and say, okay, well, uh, at least you got the message, but we're still not going to approach you. Absolutely not. Don't do it. Because they'll just go right back to it. the same lesson they had before. They will learn nothing. They'll learn that an apology will suffice. And there are times it won't. Damage is done. But... There might be hope for the generations that are still children now. And there's no reason to blame them for what the previous generations did. Therefore, we may be able to teach this lesson so that they can sit back from the arena. Because remember, sometimes when you're fighting against someone in the arena, sometimes you, you, you have to fight the current enemy in such a way that spectators understand why it's not wise to make you an enemy of their own. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out, black heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it, and black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.